Welcome, welcome, warriors! Holy Ferengi, Android Games, and more, bringing you the ultimate free to play guide for Raid Shadow Legends. Today, Dungeon Challenge 3.5. Our task is to clear the stage using either a debuff blocking skill or debuff removing skill. Surprisingly, we won't be using our starter today. We can, but we don't need the firepower to get it done. So we can showcase some skills. Let's first start with Harris. Harris, second one. Exhortation removes one random buff from all allies, has a 60% chance of placing a 30% increased speed buff on all allies for two turns. Her speed aura increases ally speed in dungeon by 16%. We also have Spirit Host, speed in all battles, 10%, so sure, we take Harris. She should also be helpful clearing the waves, since she gets an extra turn for every enemy killed. Her passive, Avenger, whenever one of our raid team members is attacked, she will retaliate with an attack. Secondly, we look at Spirit Host. Spirit Host as A3 has the skill Dark Gift, removes all debuffs on all allies, places a block debuffs buff on all allies for one turn. That's exactly what we are looking for. Her second places a 15% increase attack buff on all allies for two turns. So we have speed and we have increased attack. And she heals by 50% of damage inflicted on her A1. So let's have a look at, oh, <laughs> there she is again. Let's have a look at Valerie. Her skills don't allow us to clear the stage, but her shield is helpful. What we'll be facing inside the dungeon is Void Guardian placing poison, one on this stage, two and more on the higher stages with a secondary skill triggering that poison damage of all poisons on our champions every six, six turns, fully triggering those poisons. And she has uh, two minions. They are using remove buff, block buffs, and weaken debuffs. So Valerie's second skill, Valerie's second skill decreases the duration of all debuffs on all allies by one turn. That is useful to clear those weakens and block buffs. She also, have an, she also has an increased attack. It's not so important for us. Uh, she, uh, if ascended, she increases the duration of all buffs on all allies by one turn on top of it. So um, the moment our buffs are removed, the ascension version of her skill is of no use for us. But um, we can <clears throat> we can decrease the duration of those block buffs and weaken buffs. So and her shield, of course, her shield. Let us go back for a moment. Her shield poisons do apply to shields first. Let, let me put it this way: when when poison damage is triggered and you have shields on, it will take shield instead of, of HP. So one thing very important about the stage, all poison damages are calculated by max HP. So the moment if we put kill in with his aura increases ally HP in all battles by 15%. Those are three poisons we get for free. Just uh, need to mention this one, very important. Is 15% uh, on top of our champion's max HP, and all poisons calculate their damage by champion's max HP. So here we have three free poisons with his aura skill. So, shield guard, he is uh, very interesting. His passive allows him to clear one debuff each turn. Very useful. He can uh, remove those debuffs by himself. Dervish, her heal reduction is 
not not very useful not useful at all in this dungeon but she's a very very good spirit keep dungeon champion so um long term we should try to reuse champions and she's a very good dungeon champion for for an uncommon very good one her a1 attacks two times at random has 25 percent chance of placing 30 percent decreased defense debuff for two turns it can be skilled up to 35 percent chance and skilling very easy she's available on the market she's available from green charts so uh, she's very good to uh, increase the power of kills poisons to increase the power of whatever attack we put forth so those are the five champions we're going to use today to clear that stage before we test this team as it is here we will do something unexpected we take harris spirit host out and put kale and sniper in because there is one question that i couldn't ask answer and that is the question if Passive skills are counting towards clearing this challenge or not? And I think it is an important question that should be answered. So let us head right in. Should be on auto already. We just let that run until we get to the Guardian itself. Kale and Sniper should in no time clear those waves. We're looking forward to a very, very short run. Okay, one acid rain and we are there. Turn off auto. So, uh, Spirit Guardians, A1, uh, Void, 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 Void Keep Guardians, A1. Grim Reaper, level 1, attacks all enemies, places 2, 5% poison debuffs for 3 turns. This debuff cannot be resisted. So, those are 10% HP every turn for 3 turns. Long term, we need to clear those buffs or we won't last very long. Her second, Bane, level one, deals damage from all poison debuffs on all enemies instantly. So every five turns, bam, and you've got 15 or 20 or 30% damage on your champions and that is huge. So uh, clear those buffs. You can only brute, your, brute force yourself for so many levels, for so many stages. All Might Immunity, all dungeon bosses have that immune to stun, freeze, sleep, provoke, block cooldown skills, fear and true fear debuffs. Also immune to HP exchange effects, HP balancing effects and cooldown increasing effects. So her two minions in front of her, her two uh, guardian guardians, whatever you want to call them, they have uh, three debuff skills. One is uh, remove debuffs from all champions, which makes uh, Valerie uh, uh, not perfectly reliable choice since her shields can be removed. But it goes for all buffs. Our chosen attack and speed buffs, they will too get cleared. So the faster we get rid of those two, the more we have out of our skill set. We can't go skills alone. We need some firepower in here, especially on the higher levels. So they also have uh, block B block buffs as as skill. So the moment they put their block buffs, we first need to clear that block buffs debuff before we can apply any buffs of our own. Again, uh, shield won't work under block debuffs. Speed and attack won't work. They also have a weakened debuff which basically increases the damage of all poisons from 5% to 6.25% and also increases the damage done in normal ways by 25%. So let's, re let's let that run. Hope we get a poison on, on shield guard to check it out. Okay, there he has his poison. His passive should clear one start next round. And once that is done, we uh, just let it run to the Guardian's bitter end and we should see our challenge cleared. If yes, the question is answered. Shield guards, passive skill, all passive skills, clearing debuffs. Where is it? Where is it? Let's go to stage selection. 
Yes, there it is. Okay, that's the answer. Even passive skills can be used within here. So if you do have a shield guard, if you do have a spirit walker, you can use them to clear this dungeon challenge. But now let's have a look at the team we had chosen. All right, where is she? There she is, Harris, spirit host. Let's let it run. No need to stop for anything this time. We will, after this battle, make a, a very brief run through all champions you have seen on the screen. They are all viable candidates to, to build a long-term void keep team. Some of them are more suitable than others, but it all depends a little bit on what champions you choose for different other, other dungeons, uh, Magic Keep, Force Keep, um, Dragon, Dragon Lair, Fire Knight's Castle, whatever you use there will basically narrow down the champions most suitable for, for your White Keep team. All right, there you see it. That's uh, a weekend. Uh, I cleared already. Block buffs, that's a block buffs. Okay. Well, we lost, what was her name? Uh, <laughs> can't believe it, I forget her name. Uh, we lost her already. Uh, uh, yeah, something, something that, that sounds very speedy. Uh, never mind, we lost her already. She's only level 30, don't, don't worry about it. The only two on 40 in this team are Shield Guard and Spirit Host. So you see, again, you don't actually need a lot to clear this dungeon challenge. Okay, Dervish, yes, very speedy name. Well, there you have it. Dungeon challenge cleared once again. So the only one who doesn't really fit into, let me take out Valerie to have the colors more nice. The only one who doesn't really fit into here, that is Shaman. I forgot to remove him before starting this video. His uh, revive is nice. Haven't even incented him any, anywhere close to that yet. His revive is nice, but um, Every run I made with him basically got... Yeah, he was the first one to die, which is surprising. And uh, he, he didn't fulfill any purpose in the team, so please ignore Shaman. It's the only one in here by accident. We already had a look at Harris, Spirit Host, Dervish, Shield Guard, Valerie. I don't think we need to look at Kale or Sniper. War Priest, um, on level 30, she is no viable candidate for, for the next stage. I, of course, ran several, several raids on the next stage already. War Priest is no alternative, no solution for the next stage, stage 8. But let's have a look at Vigilante. His branding puts a weakened debuff, 15% weakened debuff. So him together with Dervish are uh, actually quite nice to get a more consistent, uh, to get a more more effective setup. Decreased defense plus weaken is always a very good thing to go. So, where are we? Uh, satire. Satire, okay. Decrease speed and turn meter, yes. Decrease speed and turn meter. So if you want to go for, for speed and gear your whole team for speed, 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 and speed, put Harris or Spirit Host as leader, make sure they all have speed boots, and then choose whatever you have to decrease speed and reduce turn meter and try to outrun it. I have my doubts it will work in the long run, but uh, I will test it out. So Ritualist attacks one enemy, 75% chance of placing a 30% decrease debuff. Cooldown down to three turns. Her first makes, uh, makes her a good, very good Spirit Keep champion. She's also capable for Void Keep, better in Spirit Keep, but if you use her there, you might want to use her here. 
So uh, 15%, two-time two -time attack, 15% chance of decreasing enemy max HP by 20%, 25% of damage dealt, plus 75% chance of placing 30% decreased defense debuff. So if you have heard together with Dervish, then uh, you can basically extend the durations of those decreased defense buffs. If there is one turn left, the other one will replace it with a two-turn one, and their cooldowns, because of speed differences and all those, will sometimes overlap, sometimes they will be triggered after each other. Decreased defense is always a nice thing, both very good for force keep, keep them in mind for force keep. There is, by the way, a force keep guide on my channel coming up. It might already be there if you take a look, depending when you watch this video. Just want to mention it here. So, Ritualist, that's where we just been. Sorceress, I wish I had the time to, to level and gear her before making this tutorial, but Void Keep is only open once per week. All other keeps are open twice per week. Void Keep only once. Attacks one enemy, 30% chance of placing 15% decreased speed debuff for two turns. So she's nice for speed teams. Attacks one enemy two times, has 20% chance of placing an extra hit. And her third, decreased defense again. So she can be slotted in both ways to deal with, to deal with uh, everything beyond clearing buffs or blocking debuffs. So, like I said, I really would have loved I, I had the chance to, to showcase her because she is one of those heroes you can use for different strategies and that makes her very valuable. Dualist is a little bit like, a, like an honorary mention. Her first skill, Elan, heals 20% of damage inflicted. It's very nice if you put lifesteal on her. Very effective, but her second skill Gives me always a little bit of headache. She has 50% chance that can be scaled up to 75% to place a stun debuff for one turn. For an uncommon, that is huge. But the headache she gives me is I don't really know where to place her. She does her, her second is useless in dungeons, but for arena. There are other champions more suitable for Arena. So she is a very, very beautiful champion, also a very beautiful model. I simply don't know where to place her. Awesome skill set, but she's so totally between the chairs that it's it's almost a shame. Very beautiful concept. I will keep playing around with her. Maybe I find a place. Maybe I find a place where I can really, really use her, where she excels. Spirit Walker. Spirit Walker is not the best of all uncommons. It takes one enemy two times. Each hit has a 20% chance of placing a 25% decrease attack debuff on the target for two turns. So if you want to go decrease speed, decrease defense, decrease attack, and weaken, you can actually do that with uncommon champions. No problem. You can totally do that with Champions available to everyone with or without chart luck. Her second battle trends level one removes all debuffs from this champion places a 25% increase attack debuff on all allies for two turns. If this one would be 50%, she could go right along with Spirit Host and Harris. It's sadly enough only 25%, which is okay for an uncommon. She is uncommon after all. Well, um, the good thing is uh, weaker buffs do not replace stronger buffs, which means uh, if there is a 20, if there is a 50% attack buff on your champions and she comes with a 25%, her buff will not stick. The 50% buff will remain. Problem is if you have one turn, it's very good if you have two turns left. If you have only one turn left, she won't do any any uh, turn time extension. So her 25% will go wasted most of the time if you use her together with Harris or Spirit Post, and especially if you use her with bows. 
So, Spirit Walker. Archer, I like to mention her almost everywhere because she is uh, almost exactly like almost exactly like Sniper, a little bit different. Minor differences in HP, attack and defense, even speed is the same. So if you want to have a second Sniper, because Sniper is just awesome until late mid game, is Sniper one of the best champions you can have almost everywhere. Huge damage dealer, very good to clear the waves and having two of her is actually very useful for many different scenarios. And using Archer allows you to skill both at the same time. Okay, I think this uh, concludes what we have to know about Void Keep. I'll keep leveling those champions to have a good look which one will turn out the best in the long run. For your own team, have a good look at the different dungeons that you're using, the different teams you're using. Try to uh, to double slot champions, to double use them, to keep down on the time and cost of XP, uh, cost of energy to get all those XP to level them. <coughs> Sorry, to level them all. Anyway, I invite you to uh, have a good look at my channel. A lot of very good videos there. It's all about increasing your free to play experience, playing Raid Shadow Legends, the ultimate free to play guide for Raid Shadow Legends. Please hit the like button, please subscribe, hit the bell, make sure you get all notifications. And I wish you awesome drops. Ferengi signing out.